boys back, welcome back to the shop and today this is the uh, reply to the comments of the square hole fucking hell so there's two parts to this video uh, not two individual videos, I mean there's going to be two parts in this episode which is number one um, just the, gen the, the, vid the video in general so the question was from a comment was um, why don't we have square cylinders because obviously if you have a square cylinder uh, you can do this, where if you have a round cylinder, like we do, like that, then there's all this region that we're not using. Without changing the dimensions of the block, you know, making the engine bigger, why can't we make use of all this? And, you know, why can't we, if, if this is a problem, why can't we just radius it? So we're using more of the volume, we're removing more of the metal, so the engine's going to get lighter and we're going to have a bigger CC. Or you could have the same CC just with a smaller piston. Why don't we do that? So that was uh, the question. I answered that question by saying, number one, there's loads of reasons. There's um, combustion, uh, combustion stability. So if we talk about that, one of the problems with combustion is that combustion is basically going to the flame front is going to do something like this in a circle like that and in these corners are going to be dead spots especially the closer you go to the corner the uh, less mixing you are going to get turbulent mixing is going to be a problem because your ports sometimes are generally offset and then the swirl in action that goes on inside your cylinder um, the strength of your actual block with it having sharp 90 degree corners you know the stress rises of that it's going to cause cracking and it's going to cause warping you are weakening the block an awful fucking lot because you're removing a lot of material you know what I mean if you've got a tray like this and you've got three cylinders in or if you've got a tray like this and it's got four squares in you can see that this one's got a hell of a lot more less material which was kind of the point um, but it's more likely to crack and break because you've got them thin little skinny webs and all the rest of it um, and there's loads of other reasons and uh, I think it was Mike Grady again who said uh, yeah there's loads of other reasons but you got to the first one which is the killer so the second part of this video is what we're going to talk about now is I said the, re the main reason why we just don't bother whatsoever we don't even bother looking into it this is what I'm trying to say is that manufacturers go eh no because is because it is cutting a square hole not cutting a square hole period we're talking about engine manufacturers thinking about square pistons in a square block with you know square cylinders as it was you know as it was um you know you ask them they go no you can't do it and people said oh fucking hell and people sent me videos like this of drilling square holes and it's like have you seen the size of that hole it's an inch at best you know what i mean you're not talking eight inches six inches of cylinder and diameters that are uh, 50 60 70 80 90 100 120 millimeters in diameter good fucking luck you know what i mean we're drilling a hole like that it's just not going to happen and people say yeah well all right then so just say if you wanted your square to be like this you wouldn't drill the whole thing which is true because we don't bore the whole thing you could basically just cast it like this but we're talking about time here you've got an entire length of a bore and with the problem is as well is with a tool with a tool that's oscillating like these weird little triangle jobbies do these cutting tools that oscillate around or whatever shape they are, you know, a bit, a bit like a wankle. Um, these oscillating tools that wobble around and nibble away these edges. You're talking about going at least six inches down, right? And that tool, right at the end of its stroke, which means the tool's got to be a lot longer than six millimetres, at uh, six inches, the tool is going to flex and deflect, which basically means that your cylinders will be square at the top, but they'll be tapered because the tool pressure, the rigidity of the tool here is really quite you know, strong or you can have it quite um, 
you know, it's a bit more stable because it's just this end of the tool. Where as soon as you plunge this tool all the way down to the bottom here, you know, now you could use an insert, let's put it that way, you could put an insert on the end of your tool, so it's not the entire tool, it's just the tip. How long is that going to take? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> you cast you cast a cylinder in a circle, right? You basically have a core, and you basically have the core that's well undersized, and then a machine just comes in and just fucking balls that out. And once you get a bit of practice with it, like manufacturers have, um, you know how big to make your cores so that they are always undersized but the machine has to machine off as minimal as possible. You know what I mean? The next thing is, is so you've cut this like this. Now you've got to hone it. Fucking forget it. The whole point of a horn pattern is that it's a cross hatch. And I will do a video on this soon. It's a cross hatch. Yeah? How the hell are you going? You can do linear. You can do linear honing. But how is that going to give you a cross hatch? You'd have to do this with it. You'd have to do this with it, and it's just—it's going. And you're—you can only do one side at a time, or you could do two sides maybe. But it, 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 you could do four sides, but it's just getting expensive. It's just getting stupid, you know. Just from the just from the the, the manufacturing point of view, it's generally where engineers think pretty much straight away look at the feasibility of it, you think, yeah, yeah, we, we'll be able to get rid of the stress risers or spark plug location, or maybe we could do something funky with the valves and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, what? Well, it's just non-manufacturable, non you know what I mean? Um, I, w I was on a project a while back where um, we had a, an issue and this material would sort that issue. This material happened to be um, a, 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 an Inconel uh, alloy it's a nickel alloy, and um, that 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 inconel would sort that problem. Apart from the fact that the inconel, the cost of the material was the same cost as the entire product, and it was just like, well, well, no, I know that the thermal properties at that temperature will sort it, but we can't use inconel. Just forget about it. It's just too expensive, and that's in a sense the same with this. You know, the manufacturers look at it and go, we just can't forget about all the other fucking problems. You just can't make this quick enough. It's not impossible to make. You just can't make it quick enough for the prices, um, for the tolerances that you want. You know, it, it's just not doable. People said other stuff, which was quite, you know, it's all interesting. You know, people are asking questions. People said 3D printing, fuck off. You are not 3, 3D printing an entire block in any time that's remotely comparable to casting and just machining, boring, boring and honing and sleeving and stuff like that. You're just fucking not. So forget that. 3D printing. 3D printing is in its infancy. It's not what everyone thinks it is. Not yet anyway. There's an awful lot of work. You know, the best 3D printing machine that I've ever seen was a MIG welder. A MIG welder attached to a robotic arm and it just lays beads and it just lays beads, and before you know it, you've got this structure that's appearing. It's quick. That's why it was beautiful. It was quick, and MIG welding isn't quick. The 3D printing you see, there's a guy on YouTube who does, he makes Iron Man suits and alien suits and stuff out of his 3D printer, and he's printing little brackets, and it's like six hours, ten hours. Now, I know he hasn't got the, the state-of-the-art really quick machines, but six to ten hours, it's all right. He's asleep, and he's making one-off custom parts for him. It's fine. But what are you talking about? Ten hours? That's that's insane. You know, you could you could machine that out of anything, anything, in two hours maximum manually with a CNC, twenty minutes. Any material you fucking want, pretty much. You know what I mean? Not some plastic, not some thermal set plastic. You could machine it out of any plastic you want. Plastics that aren't uh, that can't be th you know used in 3D printing or aren't available. It was just like you've got to be kidding me. It, it, 3D printing will eventually one day, and it'll be a long time from now because um, what I mean by about a long time is about 10 years at least. Um, because it's the speed that is the issue with 3D printing parts. You know the metal, even the metal ones, even that MIG welder. You just wouldn't pay for that MIG welder to make you a whatever out of weld bead, a weld bead. You just wouldn't. It's as simple as that. 
you know, the entire thing is a is a weld. You know what I mean? You just X-ray and go, ah, oh, there's a deviation there, 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 and there. Right? It's no good. Fucking bin it. You know what I mean? It's the because that's the only time you'd want to use the application for something like that. Something expensive like a space shuttle or a fucking fighter aircraft or something. And you know they're gonna have to really, really, really um, put the money in in behind this. You know, it's like making robot arms and all the rest of it. The reason why Kawasaki and other companies spent so much fucking money on robotic arms is because they were going to rapidly cut the cost of labour, rapidly cut the cost of manufacturing in general. You know what I mean? And they've sold these robot arms everywhere because it's a very simple principle. It's an arm that you just stick something on the end of. A spray gun, a welder, a rivet gun. You know, it, it's... It, yeah, that's why them things just lifted off like nothing. 3D printing, look at the market. Who is manufacturing components, mass manufacturing components? Um, they'll be doing one, you know, I'm sure there's car manufacturers out there that are testing, just doing one component. We'll do the bracket for the stereo, we'll do the speaker brackets, we'll do something. You know what I mean? Where the robot arms just literally fucking took over. You know what I mean? They literally took over. The car manufacturing, they do the panels, they spray stuff, they do fucking powder coating stuff. You know, they, they literally are fucking everywhere and, you know, you order shitloads of them. And it didn't take long for everyone to pick up on that. You know, uh, don't get me wrong, they don't, you know, fill every niche, you know, humans do an awful lot of it because they don't have the dexterity and stuff. But what I'm saying is, is that 3D printing, forget it, you know what I mean? Um, people said extrusions. <laughs> you can't extrude a block. You can extrude a cylinder, but you cannot extrude. Uh, extrusion, for those who don't know, basically means you use a die, basically a hole, and you um, basically squeeze something through it. Um, a bit like Play Doh, you know, when you were a kid and you had that Play Doh machine where you had a crank handle, you put your Play Doh in, and out came a star. <laughs> you know what I mean? An extru extrusion. Um, you know, process is that basically. It basically means generally it's with aluminium, and you just get aluminium. You just push it through a fucking die, and out the other end comes the shape you want the profile. You know, all these um, rickshaw bloody fucking cross-sectional extrusions and all the rest of it. Display boards. This thing on the board. This bit here. This is extruded aluminium. You know what I mean? Um, that's just what they do. That's extrusion for you. You can't extrude a cylinder, if it was just the one, with nothing else on it, yes you could, but who makes a block like that, how the, it's just, it's not, is it, you can't do profiles that are like that while you're trying to feed this thing in that way, you know what I mean, you cannot extrude that shape, you can extrude that shape if you go in that way, but you could never do this, you could never do the hole through it. Um, people said broaching, broaching's amazing, um, generally that's one of the ways we've made square holes for a fucking long time, ever since the industrial revolution. The brooch, the size of your brooch would be fucking huge. You know, if you've got a, 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 a 110, just like a Harley Davidson, big ass bore, your fucking brooch would be massive. All the teeth, that's a shit teeth. <laughs> Your brooch would be huge. Not only that is you'd have to have a fucking hole through it so it can guide the brooch through. Not only that, you know, the tool cost, uh, it's slow. You know, you could just do it with a press basically. But it's slow and as soon as this tool starts to wear, your balls are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, like I say, you'd have, you'd have a hole through it with a guide rod, big thick fucking rod to guide it all the way through. The other thing as well is you'd have to have it keyed. You'd have to have your brooch keyed. This, these are all not problems. You can do this with brooches. You'd have to have a key so you could um, basically, so you have to sort out your rotation. So you'd have to you know, put a keyway in this as well. And um, like I say, it'd just take too long. The tooling would be ridiculously expensive where they could just CNC. And the thing is, with a CNC, what it does is um, you, can, you can cut a bore and as your tool starts to wear, just say if you want to be stupidly precise, the CNC can come in and measure the bore and go hang about with this much under. It must be down to tool wear. So on its next pass, it just takes up that um, you know that tool wear stuff like that. Single point cutting or multi point cutting is easier to do than uh, 
doing the squares. So no, the square, like I say, we haven't even started looking at all the issues of doing a square ball. If people want the video, I'll do it. But, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, there's no point going on about combustion stability and stuff like that and charge mixing and all these other reasons and increased friction to, surf to cylinder wall surface areas and so on. Uh, the piston itself rocking, trying to get it to actually sit in the middle. Uh, rings, that's a fucking other problem. All these other problems, there's no point even thinking about them if you cannot manufacture it. If you can't manufacture it cheap enough, quick enough, you know what I mean? And the other thing is as well, is so you make these, so you come out with some manufacturing process that's fantastic. And then, how do people repair this? You know, now the manufacturers don't really care about that, that's granted. But just say if you were trying to do this, how would you repair a bore? It is going to start to open up. The other thing is as well is the piston's gonna, it's not gonna sit in there properly. But um, regardless, how are you going to fix this thing? You know what I mean? How are you going to bore it? Boring stuff and honing stuff is simple because it's rotational, which means it pretty much has, you know, it has the, the, the same profile all the way around and so on, you know. That, again, this is one of the things that killed the, um, the, uh, Honda. You know, this is the one, the NR500. This is what killed the NR500 in a way, it was the fact that it had these stupid pistons. Or the NR, you know, the, the 750 had the oval, the oval pistons. Um, you know, it's not worth doing. It's too hard. Again, it's like wankles. Creating those housings, the shape they are, is bloody, bloody expensive. Hope that makes sense. I'll see in a bit. This is the base core to which other cores will attach. The next core molds the engine block cylinder bores, which will house the motor's pistons. A robot inserts iron liners into six holes in the core. They prevent the aluminum walls of the bores from wearing out from abrasion. The ones for engine block areas through which oil will flow are coated with talcum powder. This keeps sand particles from sticking to the aluminum and getting into the oil. Flip them upside down and attach them to the rest. Just before casting, they heat the cylinder bore liners using high-frequency electric current. Aluminum will bond better to hot metal. After the casting, the mold spends six hours in what's called a thermal sand reclaim oven. That breaks down the glue so the sand falls away. The heat also strengthens the metal. The cast aluminum engine blocks emerge, needing just some minor finishing. Machines saw off the risers, extra metal that fed the mold cavity to compensate for the 7% shrinkage that occurs when liquid aluminum solidifies. Finally, computer-guided tooling equipment performs a rough machining of the metal. This brings the engine blocks to a near-finished state. The engine plant that buys them does the final machining before installing the engine parts.